Ladies and gentlemen, Zana in the building! Yeah, hell yeah. Hey, how are you? I was like rushing to get on and everything. I've never used Microsoft Teams before, but everything looks like it worked out. That's pretty much what everybody says when they come on. They're like, what the f is Microsoft Teams? I'm used to Zoom, Skype, blah, 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 but that's just, I don't know why we use it, but we do. Uh, Zana, could you please properly introduce yourself? Let us know whereabouts in the world you are located at the moment and plug or promote anything you'd like. Hey guys, I'm Zana. Super nice to meet you guys. Thank you guys so much for having me on your Twitch stream today. Um, I right now am uh, living uh, right outside of Houston, Texas. So, you know, we all know Texas is like the best state ever. So I just had to throw that out there. Okay. <laughs> I can dig it. I can dig it. Uh, I've only driven through Texas twice and it takes like a whole day to go from one end to the other. Uh, Cause I'm from Florida. So I, a couple times I've gone from Florida to California. That's where I live now in California. But, um, I think I think the first song we ever heard of yours was was Better Run. Um, can you tell me what that song's about? We've played it a bunch, but what is it actually about? Oh man, I don't want to get in trouble, but <laughs> why do you say that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, Better Run is just inspired by some people in the music industry, like even the because I'm I'm a Christian, so I've. I've I'm in the Christian music industry too. I kind of try to ride the fine line between both worlds of secular and Christian. And it's just like, there's so many crappy people in, in both areas in the music industry and just corruption. And like, I don't know, uh, at the time I was writing this song, uh, I was also watching the, the Netflix show House of Cards too. And I'm just like, man, there's so many people in positions of power that you would never know, like you would never guess how corrupt they are, but like behind closed doors and I've seen it, I've seen horrible things and like really corrupt things and people just in the music industry really taken advantage of. And, and it's not just the music industry, but like everywhere, you know, you have politicians or pastors or anybody that leads people, you know, it's kind of just a song like that's kind of a warning to them that like cosmic justice will follow you. Like you will reap what you sow and it's going to be because of your own doing, you know, like, so you're, so you're a big you're a big believer of like karma and like blessing the universe like i'm putting it into the universe these positive vibes stuff like that or more just like i think like god is just and he will see everything like as for me like i know that i mean i'm i'm a christian i i, don't, I can't say for the rest of the world like what you believe i can't judge you i can't judge any non-christian but i know in christianity there is a code there is a moral guideline and you try to stay within that. And um, especially if people look up to you, especially if you're teaching younger believers. And so I just feel like, you know, in the end, you know, God is just and he's faithful and he's fair. And if you just keep doing corrupt things, even though you are believing God, like you will still see punishment from that because, yeah, you're held to a higher standard, if you know what I mean. I can totally respect it for sure. Um, what, how was the tour? You just finished tour a couple days ago, correct? I did like a week ago. And it's funny you were talking about Texas. Cause like, literally that was half the drive just to get out of Texas. It was nuts, man. <laughs> I was like, it was like, uh, I want to say like a 19 hour haul from Houston all the way to Billings, Montana. Cause basically we got booked at a festival in Montana and everything we did was just kind of like gas dates to get up there and little shows here at clubs and whatnot. And it was still really fun. Um, but yeah, it was like half of that trip was just getting out of Texas. But it was amazing. It was super fun. Uh, I like came out of this really bad depression the last six months just because I don't know, like life is hard and and being independent is really hard too. And 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 I, I again, I wouldn't trade it for, for anything, but still like it's lonely. And, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out like, why am I so unhappy? Is it because the corruption of the music industry and how difficult it is or is it because i'm not doing enough music and i'm not touring enough and i'm not in my element because of covid and touring recovery was starting to you know people were starting to finally tour again this year um and they were you know bands were starting risking it again after after the horrible pandemic so um it was just a very confusing time but um tour really re this time tour really just reminded me of like how awesome it can be and although there's like a million risks going out on the road like we were very fortunate and we had a really good run in july so i i love Excellent. it Excellent.
That's awesome. Is there, aside from the festival, which I imagine was probably the biggest crowd of, of the tour, but I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, is there, and you can't count that one, is there one particular uh, smaller gig that you played on the way to the festival that's, that stood out a little more than the rest? And if so, why? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so all of them are unique and possible, like really cool. Like, uh, and, and, but one, I guess one really did surprise me. And I was really nervous to play this show because it was actually like a 12 hour haul from Billings to um, Iowa. I was actually in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And I'm like, dude, I've never played that place. I don't even know where this is. I was just told this was the date. And uh, we were playing at a church, which I do everything. I play churches, bars, venues, festivals, anything. I really don't care. Um, but we were playing at a church and, 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 you know, you don't know if people are going to be okay with your style of music. Cause I'm, you know, I'm heavy rock. I scream, I'm aggressive music. And, um, we get into this little tiny church and, and, and it was a free concert. It was just like a community thing. And, and a lot of people actually showed up and I mean, it wasn't even the best sound or stage or anything, but like, it was a really, really nice night. And I got That's to cool. meet a lot of who were like really moved by the things I was talking about on stage. And I don't know, it just went a lot better than I thought it would to be. That's awesome. That's great. I mean, that's that's the best that's the best outcome you could have ever expected. Like and you said you were nervous about it. So uh, it turned out to uh, you wowed you wowed the community. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. A lot of cool people there. And, and uh, I, something I really talk about during my stage um, time is uh, three years ago, I went, I underwent a kidney transplant and I had like all this medical stuff happen to me where like, I really went through this crazy journey in my faith where I'm like, do I even believe in God? Like, what do I believe in? Am I wrong? Like all this stuff. And I got to share that from on stage and kind of like the journey from then until now. And uh, I met actually another woman who had had a kidney transplant and we were talking a lot and shared um, our stories and she ended up giving me this little charm bracelet with a kidney on it, like a little kidney charm on it. And it was like one of the coolest presents I ever got from a fan. Uh, overall. That is but, awesome. That is yeah. very, very cool. I'm gonna let's jam better run and we'll do some more questions after that. Who, uh, who directed the video? I did. <laughs> you did? I, I do a lot. You like, crushed I'm it. Crazy. You crushed it. Very much in wow. charge of what I put out. So that, and I love that because I'm independent, so I get to do that. But really, I gave the idea to Acceleration Media, which is a a, comp a production company there in in Nashville, and we, we filmed it in Nashville. And and I really love the Matrix, and I always have. So I just wanted to live out my Matrix fantasies and <laughs> do like a green video. <laughs> so you know all the post production tricks and stuff in in all in all the applications too. So I didn't edit. So basically I wrote the, the, the treatment. I booked the location. I got the actor who is actually one of my super fans. Uh, he's the evil doctor in the video. Um, and I just kind of like broke it down. Uh, I programmed the lights in that video. My husband is actually the drummer and the two guys next to me are some of my friends who are also in a different band uh, and they knew the material. So yeah, I just, I wrote up the script. I directed the acting and uh, came up with the concept, gave the editors direction for the color uh, color editing, bought all the costumes, got all the props. So I just did it. Super cool. It for <laughs> Super cool. Hey, when, when you're on the road, when you're on tour, it's it's really easy just to eat like Taco Bell and McDonald's every stop. What what do you do to, to stay fit and, and eat healthy and stay ready to be able to play every night and not, you know, just be like, oh, all these cheeseburgers. <laughs> Yeah, so we try to stay with, um, like, uh, we call them host homes or whatever. Like, we, I know a lot of people around the country, so I'm like, yo, I'm coming in your city. Do you think, you know, you could house us? Uh, or sometimes the uh, the contract includes a hotel and that includes breakfast. So there are times where, like, we do our best to, like, have home-cooked meals. Uh, but when it comes to fast food, I just have, like, some rules. Like, I don't eat McDonald's. Like, we don't stop at McDonald's. I can't process that well. Uh, so there's, like, certain ones we look out for. Like, Chipotle, I don't know where you're from or if you guys have We have Chipotle. Chipotle. Yep. Okay, so that's, like, a little more on the healthier end and it's really filling. Um, and just certain places that are like on the blacklist of fast food that I will not eat or make my crew eat. And there are ones we try to aim to go to. Okay, so let me put a spin on it. Let me put a spin on it. Tour just ended and it was the festival day. It was the biggest crowd you played in your entire life, just hypothetically. This one time you can eat the most fried, greasy something. What is the one time cheat meal meal? 
Huh. Like, does it have to be fast food or can it be like a No, restaurant? this is like this is like a professional junk food item you can get at a restaurant or something. You know what? This is gonna be nasty, but I freaking love Whoppers. Like I, I will go to Burger King and I that's will cool. I will and it's weird because like that's like the lower end quality food, but like I'll I'll eat that. I don't know why. And I like it a lot. Hell yeah. Uh is is Zana your actual name or is that just happen to be what the band name is and that's what you roll with? So it is my name in Spanish. It's it's a Spanish. I'm 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 Mexican. So uh, my name is Susana, and it, Susie is like my English nickname. But Susana is my my full Hispanic pronunciation nickname. Uh, so I kind of like did a, a an Americanized spelling of the last half of it and just went with Zana. So yeah, it is my name. That's awesome. How did you link up with the the dude from Memphis Mayfire on production? Yeah. Oh, Kellen is so good, man. Um, yeah, so my husband, he used to actually be, uh, he's a drummer in the Better Run video. He's in all my music videos. Um, his name is Patrick, and if you guys want to check out his music, he goes by Nesdom. So go ahead and check out his stuff because I'm a co-writer on that album as well uh, that's coming out. But um, yeah, so he he was he used to be a drummer in a band called Random Hero, which is actually how I met him. I used to be in a band called Ilya. Random Hero and Ilya toured. Me and Pat met. We fell in love, got married. We, I ended up leaving Ilya first, and then uh, in 2020, Pat left Random Hero, and we decided to, you know, I was already pursuing Zana at that point, and then he decided to pursue solo. But right before he left the band, the, uh, the latest record of Random Hero was produced by Kellen McGregor, and they got connected to Kellen in Memphis in general just because they played a mutual festival with them and just introduced themselves and kind of just, like, made friends and, uh, you know, had heard some of Kellen's stuff. Uh, Kellen also does a lot of the Memphis Mayfire writing and production, too. Um, and so uh, they knew that they really liked that. So they were kind of the first ones and like Kellen's guinea pig for like a full album. And I was convinced after I heard that record, I was like, dude, I'm going to that guy for next for my record. Like he's Top the notch. quality. Just, you know, yeah. and, and, and what's really cool is that, uh, you know, we, we keep our writers really limited in the room. So it's just me, my husband, Patrick, and Kellen. And we wrote everything together. We didn't have anybody else. We didn't have anybody writing for us. And I think it's pretty awesome we came out with the quality songs that we did. So I loved it. So in, in that instance, it, so when the band comes in to play shows, they're playing already tracked out everything from your husband and Kellen and yourself that have done every instrument as far as the recordings go. This is what it is. You guys are going to play this if you're in the band, so to speak. Yeah. So really, uh, because I'm I'm a solo artist, I, I keep it that way uh, because I've been burned. In the totally past. makes sense. I totally makes sense. Never want to be in a band again, man. I'm not looking to do that again. Uh, I'm just all about solo, creative control, ownership, 100 percent me because no one can ever fire me again. OK, so I, I love it. I love it. Let's do yeah. let's do uh, prayers in the dark. And then I want to do like one or two kind of fun questions. Sure, sure. Uh, actually, regarding the fun questions, I do want to do trivia. Let's go to trivia. Uh, sure. What have you seen the most in either TV or film? You've seen this movie or TV show more than anything else. If I ask you a question about The Simpsons, Harry Potter, uh, some Netflix show, what have you seen the most where if I ask you a question about it, you will not get stumped? Be any movie, say. any TV show. Uh, probably either Rick and Morty or Spongebob. Or... What? <laughs> Was not <laughs> expecting <laughs> Rick and Morty. Give me a second. I got you. This is prayers oh, in the no, dark. No, I'm nervous. Ellen did this one too? Yeah. So Kellen, so I came in at the studio with the pre-chorus already written and like, like I just do little voice memos and I take them to the studio, see if he likes it. Um, and so it started out with the pre-chorus. We were trying to make this rock song. We weren't into it. And, and Kellen's like, you know, what? I want to try something. Dark pop is super in. Would you be willing to try like a genre twist right here? And I honestly, I thought it was great. I, I love new stuff. It just shows your range as a writer. Yeah. It has, it has like a cool, like sliding bass, like, I don't know how to describe it, like the 808 bass kind of tone to it, but that was really catchy right there. In season one, episode two, so the second episode you ever saw of Rick and Morty, it was called Lawnmower Dog. Yes. It's a long question. In this episode, Rick and Morty incept themselves into the dreams of Morty's math teacher, Mr. Goldenfold, to convince him to give Morty an A. 
While entering a series of dreams within dreams, they meet a monstrous character named Scary Terry, who is a parody of what dream-themed villain? Of course, it's Freddy! That is correct! Yeah, hell yeah! But he's got scores all right, so you've seen so you've seen the show before. Now I got to make the second question a lot harder. I judge it on the first one, how well you know, and you've seen the show. Let's see what it lands on. Oh, it's gonna land on painful tattoo. Do you have any tattoos? I do. I do. Can you tell me your most painful tattoo? Well, definitely the big guy. The outline here was just—it was really hard. I, I, I was—it was like eight hours of just the outline. So yeah, definitely the big guy. Ouch. It sounds like a stinger for sure. Give me a second to to find one more question. And uh, okay. oh, the, the other one is uh, Erase. Erase is the other the other new single of 2022. What's what's Erase about? Yeah, Erase. Yeah, so Erase I wrote after I was cried in the shower for a while. I Yeah, I was having a hard day, man. It was a bad day. Just so really overwhelmed, man, with like myself, with like my medical issues and my money situation and just like really like the music industry is just like such a beast and it's like so impossible it feels like to like make it or whatever even that even means um so i was just like crying really hard and and i really i don't know if i was suicidal or something which is terrible to say now but um i i don't know man i just started i i again what i did was that that first beginning part of erase i I don't know, just downloaded to me, like while I was showering and crying really hard, I got out of the shower, I recorded it on my phone, and then I brought it to Kellen, and he was like, what what voice memos? I wanna hear all of your ideas, all your writing ideas, and I showed him that one, and immediately he, he was like, yes, we're writing that song. So uh, then we just continued writing it, and I tried to pull back my feelings from that time that I was experiencing that, and it's just kind of like a, a dead end of hopelessness, and so yeah, it was tough. Let's jam it. I have uh, one more question for you. We'll see what it lands on after that. And then I have a final question and we'll let you go. I appreciate the time. Erase. This is a race. So in that instance, when it's going chaos, ca -ca -ca chaos, is that is that your husband's vocal or is that somebody else's like warped a certain way or how was that sample like achieved? Yeah, it's mine. And then he just drop pitched it and distorted it with some plugins. So yeah, it's, it's just me. <laughs> yeah. Your final trivia question is... In season two, episode six, I had to double check it was season two. Season two, episode six, it's called The Ricks Must Be Crazy. At the beginning of this episode, Rick has taken Summer and Morty to a movie on an alternate earth. He explains that although this earth has the best ice cream in the multiverse, it also has what disadvantage? Lies flies flies is not correct what? no the ice cream wait is that the right episode is that where the spiders make peace with the people in the world Remember? i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to you because you said spiders it says giant telepathic spiders is the disadvantage but but you said spiders right now i'm gonna give, give it to you hell yeah yeah cause the, cause the ice cream you gave me you gave me more information than the than the required answer, so to speak. So we're gonna give it to you on that one. Yeah! Congratulations. Thanks. This would apply to me, not to you. So I'll do that here shortly. Don't worry about that. Uh, if there was a final song of yours that we haven't played yet, uh, maybe one that's not as big as the others as far as popularity. What what would you prefer we play? So I would probably go with I'm sorry, even though I, I don't know, like to say it's popular or not is kind of like, I don't know, that's up to interpretation. But that's the other one I released in uh, 2021 that is really up to par with all of them. So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Here we go. We'll cook. Every song we played today was great. For real. Every song we played today was great. I have one final question for you. I ask every single guest we have on the show this exact same question as the last question. What is a piece of advice someone in the music industry has gifted you that really kind of opened and changed your mind or just, or just made the music industry better, I guess you'd say, or a terrible mistake you made early on in your career, probably in a, in a high school band or something that you do not want any starting up band to make? 
Oh my God, both of those are like so important to address. Um, number one, stop chasing approval. That's my advice for anybody who's trying to do this. Like, become a business person, learn how to run your business, and don't wait for people to tell you you're ready. Just start, just go, okay? Um, and be good at what you do, though. Like, be a good at your instrument. Um, and then be a good writer. Uh, number two, uh, horrible, like really watch out for this, like make sure you have ownership in whatever project you're, you're in, whatever band you're in, uh, make sure you're on the paperwork, make sure that they're not just taking advantage of what you're offering them. Uh, but if you're a part of a, of a band, discuss everybody's role and the ownership that they have and make people buy into that ownership if you need to and make there be penalties for leaving because the biggest thing that sets bands back is uh, lineup changes. Uh, so just have everything in, in, in paper. Don't be afraid to ask and discuss it with your band and determine ownership early on. Because if you grow, that's a very vulnerable stage where you can get really screwed over, man. <laughs> Absolutely superb advice. I hear all kinds of answers when I ask that. And uh, I think that's some of the best advice we've actually ever been given. Get your papers in order. Cross the T's yeah. and dot the lowercase J. Donna, yes. I appreciate you. This is a lot of fun. I'm glad you're safe back from tour. Hopefully you can come to California soon and uh, I'll bring a whole bunch of people out to the show. We'll come support you, but you're amazing. Keep being you and uh, you're welcome back anytime. Thank you very much for having me. I would love to have be back on. Just let me know when, when it's good, okay? Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye. Zana, everybody! Yeah, hell yeah.